Welcome Sarah Dabisher to Leading Our Own Way. Sarah and I share a very similar journey. We both are from the UK and we both decided to go backpacking around the world when we were young. Um, Sarah's been on a bit of a journey. She's now living back in the UK down due to a um, change in circumstances with her family. She's taken her two girls back to the UK to be around close family loved ones. Um, she's on a bit of a journey and finding her own way and how she navigates her life going forward. Back Now living back in the English life after living in Australia for a very long time. I think it's around 15 years. Um, but Sarah uh, had a bit, uh, had a great childhood, but went through some difficult times with moving in and out of different places, and also the dreadful scene of finding her mum who had committed suicide. Sarah dives, dives deep into um, into all of that and more from her young adulthood before she went travelling. She brings a lot of authenticity. She brings. You know, she spoke to me after the conversation, she said of how nervous she was and how she would be, you know, she'd worry that she wouldn't be able to talk. Sarah was amazing. She had no problems in sharing her story. And hopefully we can all take a piece of Sarah with us once you've listened to the episode. We'll be right back with Sarah. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Sarah, welcome to Leading Our Own Way. How are Thank you today, you. mate? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, we say, we share a similar path. Um, we are both from the UK and we both moved to Australia. Um, but you are now back in the UK. How are you finding it? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very up and down. It's, um, you know, sometimes I'm like, am I dreaming this? <laughs> it wasn't the plan. Um, the, you know, but, um, you know, that's life. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, really it's, um, you, yeah. You've done something that I'm always scared of doing in a way, because I always feel like I live two, uh, in two universes, uh, two lives. And um, as a, I guess you felt the same, but now you're living back in the original universe. Um, do you feel, how does your heart feel about Australia? So I lived in Australia for uh, since two thousand and eight. So do the math: sixteen years, I think seventeen years. Um, I've definitely I set up home there. It was my what I thought was a forever home, and uh, made lots of gorgeous, gorgeous friends. Um, but yeah, in the last few years, things didn't go the way I um, wanted it really to be, or or sort of panned out for it to be, and. Um, just very gradually, life felt a bit more lonely, and I sort of, um, for many reasons, but I sort of, um, what's the word, suppressed myself a lot, retrieved, retrieved, where you sort of, you know, bring yourselves in and you're not yourself anymore, and and um, yeah. definitely felt the pull more so uh, to be with family and um, friends, lifetime friends, and um, yeah, family that. I miss a lot in the UK and it's many, many reasons. Obviously there was COVID. Um, I think from the beginning, I think moving to the UK, oh, sorry, moving to Australia, um, starting a family, we moved out with a five month old baby. Um, I'm a very, I think I always have been previously a very positive person and life's, you know, just grab it by its horns and, and um, life's an adventure and um, go for the best and you know and um, and it was amazing I always saw where we lived Adelaide as a beautiful beautiful uh, place to live especially for families if anyone promoted could promote Adelaide it would be me um, it has so much to offer vineyards lovely city beautiful beaches everything and um, yeah but I think um, what I was truly missing what I really thought I could be without was um, uh, uh, um, a support network, an emotional um, support network. And I know a lot of families suffer that. A lot of um, 
sitcoms <laughs> or English that move out there, yeah. especially with young children. And I know, you know, I joined the Ping Pong Poms um, Facebook page a few years ago or a couple of years ago, I can't remember. And, and it's so common with families or couples that move out there and then they're going to have a family and they're really struggling because you meet other friends and you do sort of, you do um, gravitate to other English people that are in the same boat as you or other foreigners, if you like, that are in the same boat that you've moved out there and you don't have your your emotional family support network out there. And, um, and so, but then you also don't want to burden them. They've got their own kids and they've got their own sort of lives. And, you know, with your own family, they don't care. They're just there, whatever, as you would be with them, you know. So I guess it's that... Yeah, I could go on forever about that. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah. think, um, you know, I think it was hard. It was, I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all. Definitely when the girls were young, it was just me, my husband and the and the kids. And um, yeah, I was definitely lacking uh, emotional um, support. And um, and being the other side of the world, you don't want to ring your family. You don't want to, you don't want to worry them. And especially me, oh, God, crying already. I've got my tissues ready. Especially, um, sorry. Especially given that my mum, um, sorry, got to go in there already. My mum um, passed through suicide. Then you don't want to. Um, well, I never wanted to worry my family with you know feelings of sadness, and so I um, you just bury it and get on with it, you know. And um, yeah, and there is a. a um, I do feel sad. My sadness that I feel now is towards the girls that I probably wasn't the most patient parent um, to them because I didn't have that emotional support. I did have a mum's group, which I kind of gate crashed. I met another girl who was also from this area in England and um, she introduced me to her mum's group and I just loved it. So that's, you know, the best advice I can give for anyone that moves out there who's going to have children is to join a mum's group um, because um, you do get that emotional support. And But again, most of them are Australian. So again, they've all got their own families and their kids have got grandparents and you kind of, you feel guilty, you know, that my girls don't have that. Whereas me, I was so lucky as a child growing up, I'd be at my grandparents every weekend and I was an only child growing up but my um yeah I'd always go on holidays and I'd take a friend with me on holidays so I guess it's kind of I had a, an amazing upbringing and I knew that we were moving to Australia to give our children an amazing upbringing but I just don't think you can beat that family um well a bit of respite for the for us for, for a start <laughs> you just didn't get that Ikea Ikea was my favorite place in the world where sometimes I put them in the crash there which was amazing um right near us but um yeah getting that sort of um break a break that you need so you and husband could spend a bit of time together and be you again and not just be mum sleep deprivated crazy mum so um yeah so is that did that answer your question was that even the question <laughs> Yeah, I mean, with all that in mind, what kept you in Australia then for that length of time? I just knew it was beautiful. I knew it was a beautiful country. I knew um, it was a better life for the girls. I'm a sun worshipper. I love the sun. So we had that. It's about three months of the year in, we were just saying that yesterday, three months of the year it's cold in Australia, whereas three months in the year it's warm in the UK. <laughs> Pick one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, it's, I mean, it's not even really, I mean, it is cold, but even on sunny days, uh, you know, cold days, the sun will come out. The sun is pretty harsh in Australia and it wouldn't be too bad. But, yeah, I knew that was what was important, you know, like, and also not important, not just the weather, but um, um, opportunities, work opportunities. I, th I feel that kids were kids for longer there. They go to school at a, at, a, at a later, an older age, sorry. It's a year later than they do here. So I really felt like here in the UK, it felt like education, education very early on. Whereas over there, it was more, I'll tell you what as well, which is quite different, um, which I really loved over there, was that the um, the school system are really they're, they're really positive about taking holidays or either that or they just don't care. <laughs> they're like, yeah, take time off. We're not going to argue, you know, take time out. And I know there's different reasons. 
Um, but I do think, you know, having a family holiday and, you know, reconnecting with the family um, is amazing. And you learn a lot, especially if you go traveling to a different country, different languages and things like that. It's great for the kids. Um, whereas here, oh, to get them out of school for a week, I think you have a fine um, and it's really hard. Mm. And that's probably because mm. I understand that for teachers, they've got to, um, you know, that kid's then behind, I guess, unless you know, we could take their work away with us. But um, but then there's, I guess, there's um, less spaces for kids in school here. So it's not fair that for you to take the mick or I don't know. There's many reasons, I'm sure. But it's just interesting that it's quite different. It's a different sort of mindset, it feels like, within the school system. Yeah, it just feels it, like it's, it's more funny. It. Sorry. As you know, I'm in education and, and um, um, I don't think I can offer I feel like I'm a good teacher, um, yeah. but those four walls and myself as an educator cannot offer. Um, I don't care what other people think and say. <laughs> I know a lot of people, some teachers won't agree with me, but I don't think what I, I don't think I or a four classroom, a four wall classroom can offer what the world can do. You know, what a trip can do. The exactly. trips here might be different yeah. to the trips there. You know, um, yeah. people going to a, a beach, a typical British holiday would be going to the beach for two weeks. So maybe that offer, that holiday might not offer the same as the classroom. So they might have a point. Yeah. But the, the, the adventures that you go on here, kid, people here don't go to, to the beach holiday. If they do, they might spend a day, but the rest of it is going through nature. They're hiking, they're, they're, they're camping, they are doing trails and treks and going in the bush and through the jungles and whatnot it's a different type of holiday you actually need a holiday to recover from that holiday yeah. trip don't you um, yeah exactly and, you know yeah. I've, had, I've had parents i've had parents say to me um you know can you provide some work i'm like um no i i cannot um it's not about me giving me more work it's about why do you want them to sit down and do a writing task when they could write it? If you did want that, they could do a writing task based on the trip that they're at. So it's authentic and real in the moment, right? Rather than me giving them a world of paperwork to do when they're then going to miss out on their trip. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you move, I feel you moving back to the UK is a part of how I typically start off the episodes by asking, um, how are you leading your own way? And I feel that's part of your journey. You moving back, am I correct? Is you moving back to the UK part of the way you're, I mean, how are you leading your own way now, Sarah? Okay, so um, so it just it just felt like we'd, um, um, so we'd been in the same house for 15 years, beautiful, beautiful home and, um, and um, yeah, I guess it just felt like, for instance, my eldest said, um, there's lots of things, there's lots of things, lots of reasons. Um, but um, my my eldest said, mum, I'm going to be gone in two years time and you're going to be stuck here at home. And I think we got into a bit of a rut of um, a little bit too um, comfortable, boring, if you like, really boring. I'm quite an adventurous person and I just think life's so bloody short and I feel like I've gone through a lot in life where you just still want to take you know, the ball bites horns and that's really not very, is that the right thing? But yeah. and Say what um, you want, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I've definitely felt over the last few years um, losing myself, not being who I am, being someone else um, um, to please other people, you know, to be how I should be and not be who I am kind of thing. And, um, um, and it's not that I... Um, it's not that I felt that the UK was the place for me to be anything different. It just felt that I needed to just get out of the situation I was in. And um, and it got so bad for me mentally and, um, and eventually physically um, that I really didn't feel that I had the strength to leave, to come out of a situation and um, start on my own. Um, even though Adelaide was like home to me, but when it comes to um, the emotional support that I needed, that I know I've always had in the UK, always had in the UK, and I knew that the girls would get as well. So I just felt that um, the sudden urge um, to come back here to be able to um, find myself again. Um, and that's definitely happening now. And, um, yeah, find 
find myself again and um and be able to then uh, be the mum that I need to be and the person that I need to be for my girls for most you know most importantly and um, and then to work out where I want to go and I still don't know you know it's just everything that I felt we were missing in Australia. So those holes that you felt when you were living in Australia those holes are now being filled would you say or yeah. have been filled? Absolutely yeah, yeah tenfold yeah it's been amazing yeah yeah and what are you doing to fulfill some of the passions that you hold then in your daily life? So I'm doing firstly what I have to do. So I am very passionate about yeah. mental health and I've been affected by mental health um, over the years. And um, um, so I have to. <laughs> um, do you mean like, do you mean what I'm doing for mental health or what I'm doing as a daily job? <laughs> Or... anything anything that you feel that you are doing to you know yeah okay so it has been well, you're passionate great. about if, if, if mental health is, is something that you're passionate about as it is for me um too absolutely um and I, I i know you've got other passions in some of your photography businesses that you've mentioned previously in, in our previous chats as well yeah um, but let's let's start with let's start with your mental health uh journey yeah, okay. Well, I didn't really understand mental health as a, you know, depression, let's say, as a when I was younger. And uh, my mum was certainly very up and down with depression. Um, going back to her, she was a typical, if you like, I would say, well, not saying that she was named this, but we would say you're probably a bit like a, the middle child, the classic middle child, black sheep of the family. And that's no, um, you know, nothing on her siblings or it's just the way it was. And I don't, And I don't think that my grandparents saw her like that but it just seemed like anything that could go wrong with her did go wrong with her and um so yeah she um um she's got an older brother who I would say is successful in life and a younger sister who's successful in life and um, um my mum uh, fell pregnant with me at the age of 17 and at that time that's not that's certainly not celebrated back in 1977 mm. 76, mm -hmm. and so England as well Sorry. And in England too. Yes, exactly. And um, so I would say, you know, my grandparents then were probably quite old fashioned and, you know, don't want the neighbours to find out things like this and to be pregnant out of wedlock. And um, so, yeah, mm. there's the first hurdle. Oh, and no, not the first. I mean, she. I think she drank at 15 and, you know, got into, was into boys and a, a younger age. And um, anyway, mm. um, so, yeah. Um, that so, so how's that because because obviously we'll, we'll we would definitely dive deeper into that um but what's your journey with your mental health in the present moment in the present day back in, in back in now you're back in england my my journey now is i've i've definitely hit rock bottom with mental health before i went backpacking and so mm. that's always been a little bit of a worry you know to ever go there again i've never been there since i have been really low since um so now uh, my Thing now is that you've just got to put yourself first stop putting other people first and it's the aeroplane um method is what they say is you know the 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 parent has to put their mask on first to breathe first to be foot before they can help anyone else mm -hmm. and um, it is hard to do that as an empath as a parent as well you know you want to make sure your kids are good first but i've definitely found um ice baths is amazing mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's still part of me that's a bit like conspiracy, like, is it good or is it just that I feel so <laughs> mental, like it just wakes me up so much that nothing in the world could ever be as harsh as an ice bath, <laughs> you know, but it definitely does. Do you do an ice bath every morning? Every morning. So I, I, I feel a bit of a faker, really, because it's not ice, but it is bloody cold. So I don't go to the shop and get a bag of ice, which I will do. But um, just running the cold water here is bloody cold. And I went to Manchester a few days ago on work trip and the, and the water's definitely colder there as well. It's definitely colder up north here. Um, and it's amazing. Yeah. And I always remember that. I remember when I was backpacking in Australia, um, the cure for the hangover was getting into that sea the next morning. You know, if you want to, mm -hmm. you are best in your tent or in your backpack or whatever, or, you know, your backpackers, or you just get into the sea and um, and wake yourself up. And it's just anything. It's just so refreshing. And it is. It's a real feel good. And um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, ice baths is um, a daily bath. And actually, I got it from you, Andy. You said about... Um, 
having it in the morning. So I'd, I was always having a bath in the evening just before bed and it still worked for me. But then I was worried because it chilled me out so much that if I did it in the morning, I'd mm. be really knackered throughout the day. But so far in the last week, I think I've been having one in the morning and then having my morning shower straight after. And the water runs away so slowly that even sometimes I'll get back in and lay down in the in the cold bath and, you know, get that chill again. It just, yeah, it's just amazing. And I keep saying to people, yeah. do it, do it. And they're like, no, thanks, no, thanks. I'm like, please, please do it. Because you know? it just, it is so good. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, 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 that and yoga. For clarity purposes. Yeah. It, absolutely. It, I mean, I, I, I think a cold plunge, um, do you, if, you, if you're going to do some exercise, I would, because what I've, I've cancelled a bit of my exercise in the morning, my 15, 30 minutes worth of exercise. I need to get back into it, but typically I would do the cold plunge, do the exercise because I can get more out of my exercise because of the cold plunge. Yeah. Um, and then I go and do the hot shower, but then I would finish on a cold shower again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's typically what I still do every morning is the cold yeah. plunge, hot shower, and then finish off on the cold. Um, and, you know, obviously walking with the sunrise, or the, not even the sunrise, just sunlight in the morning, Whatever. getting that gain, just so, so much light in the morning. <laughs> wow. I, I prefer to be out at 6 a.m. Say that again, sorry. So I was going to start saying, you're just rubbing it in now with the sunrise because we just don't oh, get yeah, sorry. <laughs> I have lots That's of your own fault, not mine. <laughs> you choose your path. Um, yeah, no, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.